Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Today we have some video of the proof loading of the wing. Uh, this testing is where you put weights on the wing to simulate various G loads and uh, proofs in the pudding. You find out whether or not the structure is actually strong enough. You find out if your all the engineering, all the calculations were correct, or at least good enough. Uh, so it's always a nail biter. Uh, years and years of work uh, can go to waste in one slip of the uh, forklift or somebody tripping and bumping something at the wrong time because there are tremendous loads being placed on the wing. Uh, so great care is taken to make sure something like that doesn't happen. And then you always got your fingers crossed to make sure that both the wing was designed correctly and built correctly, that there's no flaws in it that would cause a stress riser or just some uh, brain dead moment of design effort uh, that caused a stress riser to occur somewhere which would cause buckling and then the whole structure fails. So uh, it, it, there's always a little bit of sweat involved and quite a bit of adrenaline and uh, you'd like to go fly it but you got to get the proof loading done first. So the proof loading that you're seeing here today, we ran up to 2.9 Gs, which is sufficient to do the initial test hops with the wing, where you're flying 10, 20 feet off the ground. And we know that for those hops, the wing will be strong enough. Uh, the highest loads encountered in those situations is probably going to be a situation where you might boink a landing and put some extra load on the wing. Uh, and then later, when we want to do high altitude flight testing, we'll probably take it up to about four and a half plus Gs uh, to make sure it's uh, overall strong enough. You're going to see an initial lift where we uh, attempt to lift up the wing with the 2.9 Gs loaded on it and uh, it's balanced a little too tail heavy in this particular case. So we have to set it back down and adjust the uh, slings on the forklift uh, so that we get more over the CG. And we had to also uh, shift some of the sandbags forward so the weights were uh, symmetrical about the spar uh, so that they were loaded in the proper position to give the proper balance point. Uh, it gets a little crowded and uh, we had the bags just a little too far aft. So you're going to watch us come up on the lift here and you're going to see that it's tail heavy and we set it back down. Up slowly, Bob. Up slowly. Thanks for watching. Good Now you may have heard me say something about two and a half G's in that last video and that was a remnant of a error that I made in uh, filling up the sandbags. Uh, we thought we were going to do two and a half G's but uh, a little miscalculation we ended up doing 2.9 G's. For this next lift you're going to see that we have everything balanced out and we get a, a pretty nice clean lift. Uh, there is a little bouncing at the end uh, when the forklift is stopped. Uh, that puts a little extra bending in the wing. Uh, it's kind of like flying in turbulence when you're already loaded up. So we probably put a little over three G's on the wing that way, but that's fine. Uh, the wing bounced along just like it's supposed to. Uh, we are using a laser uh, set up at the uh, joint where the center section joins the main wing panel and we're measuring the bending uh, out to where the winglet is. Um, uh, Peter, one of my patrons, uh, generously uh, calculated the expected bending. <clears throat> so we're using those expectations to set a limit on how much bending we're going to allow before we stop the test. The bending came 
uh, nowhere near uh, those limits, which is a good thing. It means that the wing is a little stiffer, a little stronger than expected, and we like that. Um, and you'll note during this lift that the uh, curve of the wing as it bends uh, is nice and continuous. In mathematical terms, the first derivative is continuous of the curve of the wing. Uh, in other words, there's no discontinuities in it, which is what we want to see. Uh, the bending of the wing looks perfectly normal. And at the approximately 3G load we have, we're experiencing about 8 and 3 quarter inches of deflection at the winglet, uh, which is not bad at all. Uh, it's kind of in line with what a normal standard class sailplane uh, would exhibit, at least a fiberglass sailplane. And uh, that's to be expected. Uh, and you're going to watch this. It goes pretty quick. We get the lift done and uh, we put her back down pretty quick. What you don't see in the video is that while we had it up, uh, we stopped, we went, and we uh, moved the elevons up and down and checked to make sure that there was no binding in the hinge points for the elevons when the wing is loaded. Uh, that can happen with certain control configurations, and you have to make sure that uh, you have full control movement capability even under maximum G loads. So, uh, here we go. Up slowly. I heard one little creak that last time. I heard a little snick somewhere. So, this is noisy. Yeah. Give me a hand signal if you need to stop. Okay. This means up. And there you have it. At this point, uh, we could all heave a huge sigh of relief. <laughs> Put the wing back down, everything was fine. So the test was completed successfully, and uh, next time we take it out to complete the ground handling test, uh, if the conditions permit and we're all set up, then we know the glider's strong enough to go ahead and do a couple of test flights. And I got my fingers crossed. I hope that goes well. We're searching for a good location to do that. You know, it never ceases to amaze me uh, what you can do with composite materials. Here we have a 50-foot uh, wingspan uh, aircraft. It uh, weighs less than 100 pounds, and it's carrying over 600 pounds of sand on it. Uh, so that is amazing strength to weight ratio. Uh, it's really something what you can do with these materials and it makes aircraft possible that, oh, a mere 10, 15 years ago, we could not have done. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, several people have attempted to make a 15 meter foot launchable sailplane and to this date, uh, nobody has actually successfully foot launched one uh, without being towed at the same time. In other words, nobody's ever stood on a cliff or a hill, picked up a standard class size sailplane, 15 meter wingspan, and run into the air. And I am hoping that with this uh, vehicle, uh, that will be a first. I will be able to stand on the side of the hill, pick it up, run with it, and take off in a standard class sailplane. Uh, it'll be uh, an achievement that uh, puts a big smile on my face. And I hope that it helps push forward uh, the state of the art. And I hope that all of these videos help other people with their projects uh, apply some of the things that I've learned uh, to make their own uh, vehicles better and have higher, higher performance and more fun for everybody. So I want to give out a special thanks to Dave, my buddy Dave, and my buddy Bob, who helped with this test, I could not do this work without them. And thanks to Peter for doing the uh, bending calculations that kept us within uh, safe bounds, uh, made sure we didn't break the wing. Uh, and uh, a special thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon who help uh, financially support this project. Uh, they make this thing so much more special to me. And uh, my unending thanks to all of you. And if you are out there listening on YouTube and you'd like to be more a part of this project, uh, you can go over to Patreon. The link is in the description. And uh, sign up at any level there and become a patron and enjoy more technical details than you get here on YouTube and uh, help contribute to pushing the state of the art forward. And in the meantime, as I always say, please fly safe and bye for now.